In a recent Monroe Live YouTube video, Sandy Monroe and Tom Prucha discussed some new 4680 CyberCell details, including something that led them to believe that that battery does have a cathode that was manufactured with a dry process. So has Tesla finally solved the dry process manufacturing on the cathode side? Well, stick around as I share my thoughts on this based on what was revealed. I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watt. Tesla's dry electrode manufacturing is supposed to revolutionize the way batteries are manufactured, but the process has been very difficult for Tesla to commercialize, especially on the cathode side. For example, the first gen 4680 battery cells that Tesla used in the Model Y for a period of time only had a dry process manufactured anode and not a cathode. And even in their next generation cell design that was used in the Model Y for a short period of time before the cyber cell, that next generation battery, as confirmed by James Ma on X.com, still had a traditionally wet process manufactured cathode. However, as you might be aware, the Monroe and Associates team have been tearing down a Tesla Cybertruck. And not only are they analyzing the truck, how that was built, but they've also started analyzing the cyber cells in the battery pack. In a video published on June 21st, Sandy Monroe and Tom Prucha, who is the director of electrification at Monroe, shared some interesting preliminary cyber cell cathode details, and they appear confident that this new cyber cell will prove to have a dry process manufactured cathode. However, do note, I'm not sure that they've done a full analysis on this cell just yet. So I don't know if we could be 100% sure on this, but they appear confident that this will be the case. Now beyond the cathode details, which I will discuss shortly, they also confirmed that this battery cell has a new compact cell design that drastically lowered the battery cap profile and allowed more room for the electrode jelly roll. With that being said, here's what Sandy and Tom revealed about the cyber cell cathode in that video. Sandy specifically mentioned referring to the cyber cells, quote, these batteries appear to be a little different in that there's nickel and there's cobalt, but no manganese. Now, when Sandy Monroe said that the cathode of this battery had no manganese in it, that really surprised me because Tesla's first generation 4680 battery cell, the cathode was made of nickel, manganese, and cobalt. So for this next generation battery to not have manganese, that's a big change. In addition, any test that I mentioned in a previous video of a second generation cell design that was in the Tesla Model Y for a period of time, at least some of the later structural battery pack Model Ys before Tesla discontinued that pack. Apparently that particular chemistry was a nickel manganese cobalt aluminum or NCMA battery chemistry. So once again, a different change from the first generation cell design to that second gen Model Y battery cell to the cyber cell now not having manganese, at least in this iteration that the Monroe team tested out of the Cybertruck. Now, I assume Sandy Monroe and the team will release more battery details in the future, and they didn't specifically mention all of the cathode details other than that it had nickel and cobalt and no manganese. So I'm wondering if this is either a nickel cobalt aluminum battery chemistry, NCA, like Panasonic uses in the 2170 battery cells and the 18650 battery cells that they build for Tesla, or if this is simply a lithium nickel cobalt oxide battery, once again, without that manganese and without aluminum added. When it comes to a possible reason why Tesla is not using manganese, at least in this particular cyber cell, Tom Prusha said, quote, so we speculate that this has got something to do with the dry electrode process. Manganese as a material isn't generally as in short supply as some of the other materials we worry about, so it's interesting that they eliminated it. So they had to have a process reason for doing so because it was probably not cost or performance driven. But certainly one of the big things they were trying to achieve is the dry electrode process on both the cathode and the anode. And as you may recall, they only achieved it on one side in the last cell design. So whatever the magic that allowed them to do that, and we have high confidence, we will find it to be a dry process for both this time. However that worked, it looks like eliminating the manganese helped with that somehow. Now I do wanna be really clear here that based on what Tom said, I don't think we can be 100% confident that they will find a dry process manufactured cathode. 
Once again, he said, we have high confidence. We will find it to be a dry process for both this time. So Tom has confidence that they will, but he hasn't come right out and said for sure that it does. I don't know how much analysis they've done just yet, but we can't be 100% sure on this as it sits right now. I hope this is the case because this would be a great sign and something that I'd be very excited about, but I'm still holding back my enthusiasm just a little bit, especially with other news that I've talked about in the recent days that seems to kind of conflict with Tesla solving the dry manufacturing process on the cathode. While it is very possible that this battery cell does have a dry process manufactured cathode, and I hope that is the case, it's also very possible that the cathodes Tesla is using in their 4680 batteries, they could be purchasing these cathodes from outside companies like Panasonic or LG. For example, I covered this in a recent video, but apparently Tesla is working on a deal to purchase a large amount of electrodes from LG, according to this Korea Economic Daily article. In this article, it was reported that Tesla ordered 6 trillion won of electrodes from LG Energy Solutions. And while this article did not specifically mention which electrode, whether this was anodes or cathodes or both, since they have apparently figured out how to manufacture their anodes with their dry process, I believe it seems very clear that this would be a deal for cathodes, not anodes. In addition, the way it's written in this article makes it look like these are finished electrodes, not just active electrode materials that Tesla is going to use to manufacture these cathodes or electrodes because it says specifically here, battery manufacturers process anode and cathode materials together with conductive materials and binders to create electrodes, assemble them into battery cells and supply them to automobile manufacturers. Tesla ordered electrodes just before assembly. So with that being said, I do hope that the cyber cells do indeed have cathodes that have been manufactured with a dry process. I hope that the Monroe team is able to come out and say that for a fact. But I just wanted to go ahead and put that out there that there is a chance that even though this battery does not have manganese and that led Tom to believe that's going to be a cathode manufactured with a dry process, it could just be a cathode that was manufactured by, say, for example, Panasonic. I don't have any official sources saying that Panasonic is supplying uh, 4680 cathodes to Tesla, but I believe that is in the realm of possibility. And if it is, for example, a nickel cobalt aluminum cathode, an NCA cathode without manganese, of course, that does not have manganese in it, that, of course, could explain this. And I don't know if that's the case or not, but it's very possible that it's something like that where Tesla is purchasing these cathodes from someone else and that they are still having issues with the dry manufacturing process and that this is not indeed a dry manufactured cathode in this battery. I hope I'm wrong on that, but I believe that is a strong possibility. However, beyond the cathode, excitingly, it does look like a new cyber cell does have silicon in the anode. This is something that James Ma did share in this post on x.com with that second generation cell design out of a Model Y that was tested. That battery cell had some silicon. But now, according to Tom, apparently Tesla's cyber cell also has some silicon in the anode. Tom Prucha mentioned, quote, we know with some certainty that the anode has more silicon. We didn't find any silicon in the Gen 1 cell, but we did find some in this one. So we're hesitant to give you an exact number, but suffice to say, they did get some silicon in the anode, and there should very well be an increase in energy density from that change alone. We believe there's other differences that will facilitate incremental increases in energy density as well, but with some certainty here, we at least have seen the silicon that they said they would have, and here it is. I am excited that Tesla is making marked improvements with the 4680 battery cells. Silicon in the anode, for example, not only increases the energy density, but it should allow the battery cell to charge faster. And hopefully Tesla is able to increase that amount with time. With all that being said, I am excited for more details to come out from the Monroe team about some of the more exact details about this battery cell. But do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd also like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.